What is going on, investors? That's right. Happy Friday. Hopefully, you guys had a great week. That means it is time for our Fang Stock Recap Show, where we recap all the news that has been happening with all the Fang Stocks plus Microsoft and Tesla. And then we get over to the stock charts, take a look at the price action that we've seen over the last five days, what it means and what it could potentially mean heading into your Monday new trading week next week. Some of these stocks have been ripping to the upside like Facebook and others have been kind of going sideways and maybe even going down a little bit this week. We'll talk about what that means when we get over to the stock chart. Now, today, pretty much an update across the markets. Now, we are all keeping it. Yeah, we're all keeping an eye on the 10 year yield. Yeah, you heard that right. It's sitting at one and three quarters percent. The reason why we're taking a look at the 10 year yield on a FANG stock recap show is as this thing has been going up, these FANG stocks have been trouble kind of breaking through to the upside. And, but, Here's the good news is 10 year yield is hitting a level of resistance here. One and three quarters percent, pretty hard level of resistance. There's a lot of price action here. Sellers will likely step in here. But if we do break above that, yeah, we easily get into 2% on this one. And so how fast that happens, the, bio, the you know, the velocity of the moves definitely going to play an impact on the markets. It's something that you want to keep an eye on and we'll see what happens heading into the coming weeks ahead on that one. Now, now, what's bucking the trend here in terms of the 10-year yield going up? Well, Facebook doesn't care. Start of the week at 272 and is sitting at 290 bucks. It's up huge today, about $10 per share, about 3%. That is because Mark Zuckerberg was on Clubhouse. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg was on Clubhouse. Maybe I need to get on Clubhouse because Mark Zuckerberg said, I think the reality is that I'm confident we're going to be able to manage through that situation and we'll be in a good position. I think it's possible that we may be even in a stronger position. And the position he's talking about is Apple is making changes to its browser, making it harder for companies like Facebook and Google and affiliate marketers and uh, advertisers in general to to track your progress and your history across the web, whether it's through apps or through the Safari browser or any type of motions that you make as you go through your day, well, it's going to make it a little bit harder because Apple is going to add some security features that will potentially make it harder for Facebook to make money through advertising. But Mark Zuckerberg came out today and said that they'll be able to navigate that. And I actually believe him, believe it or not. Now, Facebook facing new antitrust probe. We could just have this up every week. We've seen this up for at least the last two or three months. Every week, somebody, some government is coming forward with some kind of new antitrust probe at this time coming out of the UK. It looks like they're targeting Google and Apple as well. Now, Facebook is testing new paid deals for new writer publishing platform. This is interesting. So Facebook's, this is not going to be a major revenue driver, at least in the shorter term and maybe even the slightly intermediate to longer term. But it's showing me, in my opinion, kind of a shift from Facebook because Facebook realizes, look, we got all these people publishing uh, content on our site for free, but eventually that de the demand for that is going to start to dry up a little bit. The ability to monetize that is likely going to dry up. I think what Facebook and a lot of these apps are going to have to do is going to have to take actually the YouTube model. YouTube actually pays people like me, or I, not necessarily pays me directly, but gives me a portion of the money that they earn as people watch these videos like you are now. And I think Facebook is probably going to have to do that. And I think not necessarily to all users, but to a certain segment of users, Facebook is going to have to pay them for publishing on the platform. And I actually think it would be a positive for not only those writers, but Facebook in general. We'll see what that leads to heading into the future. Now, Apple started the week at 120, end of the week at 120. So we'll talk about that when we get over to the stock chart, see what that means. Now, Apple could launch some new iPad Pro. That's the big iPad models in April. So as soon as next month, doesn't look, as I read through this, not a lot of changes here. Maybe a small in-house chip change, things like that. Maybe a new Thunderbolt connector, but nothing really big here. So we'll see. That's probably not going to drive a lot of noise. Now, Volkswagen and Apple versus Tesla called the likely electric vehicle scenario. 
So a decision is expected by Apple by the end of the summer on a manufacturing partner. And most analysts that I have seen believe it's going to be a Volkswagen because Volkswagen has a need for a technology platform and Apple has the money and probably the resources to supply that to Volkswagen at some point. So we'll see what happens going forward with the electric car. Now, Apple's price target was raised at Evercore with a $225 bull case on a long-term growth. Look, the stock's at $120. So they're adding another $100 to the price target. Their price target is between $163 and $175. That's on a normal case scenario. That's still $40 to $50 higher than it is now. And the bull case, if everything goes well, is $225. 25 and the bear case is 90 bucks. So you got about $30 in downside and they're targeting between 40 and a hundred dollars in upside in that one. So whether or not you want to believe them, I'll let you decide on that. Now, Amazon, much like Apple start of the week, $3,060 end of the week, 3,060 and change. So basically flat on the week as well. We'll talk when we get over the stock chart. Is that a bad thing? Is it just a boring week? Is it a oh, oh, throw out week? Actually, no. So you want to take a look at that when we get over to the stock chart. Now, Amazon workers around the United States find inspiration in Alabama's union vote. So the, I believe the union vote in Alabama is still ongoing. And obviously, these union people that take a, a proportion of these people's salary as you know the dues that they require if you have a union, well, they're just frothing at the mouth because Amazon has tons of employees. And if they can go in there and get them all to unionize, well, guess what that means? They're going to make a lot of money. And so we'll see where this leads to. And I've said on the channel, and I think people have taken offense to it, but they don't understand. This is an investor channel. I don't care. And I don't want to say I don't care, but as an investor, I really don't care about the feelings. I don't really care about uh, you know anything other than these companies that I'm investing in making money. Okay, it'd be great if we could talk about the sunshine and roses, but money does not care. Money does not have any feelings. And the more workers that unionize over at Amazon, guess what they're going to do? They're going to replace them with robots. And I've said that several times here, and that is what's going to happen. That's why I'm not too concerned about workers unionizing over at Amazon. NFL settles new media deals. Isn't it interesting? So Amazon took the Thursday night. Amazon has had partial rights to the Thursday nights. I think they've streamed it, but you could also watch it on CBS. But it appears to me now that you are only going to be able to watch Thursday night football on Amazon Prime. Prime or however Amazon decides to distribute that content. So that's kind of interesting. Could lead to more people having to at least borrow somebody's Prime uh, subscription or signing up one for themselves. Now, what's interesting is we haven't got a fate on Sunday Ticket, which is currently in the hands of DirecTV, which is partially owned now by Direct, uh, excuse me, by AT and T. It appears though that that could be heading to ESPN Plus, which is great because I just canceled my uh, DirecTV and I would still like to have Sunday tickets. So if it goes to uh, Disney Plus, that would be great or ESPN Plus. Amazon named Fresh Pick at Baird with a $5,000 yeah, $5, share price. So they're saying that the stock is significantly undervalued and in the medium term, medium term, a $5,000 share price, you know, driven by robust fundamental trends in e-commerce, marketplace, and cloud, basically what Amazon is in the business of. So $5,000 per share is basically $2,000 more than where the stock is now. That is, boy, that would be a massive, massive upside. And me owning some shares of Amazon, <laughs> I would like that myself. Now, moving on to Netflix, start of the week, 511, end of the week basically at 511 bucks, not a lot of news. There was news out of Netflix. There was like gold Oscars or golden globes or whatever they were. I don't really pay attention to that stuff. I don't really care about those award shows. Those are more self-serving for the people that win those awards than anything else. Now, Google started the week at 
2041, end of the week at about 2035. We'll get over to the stock chart on Google and see if it's holding that level. If you recall, Google's has been kind of in an upper channel. You can't really see it on a chart like this, but it's been channeling up here. And as long as it holds that channel, things are pretty good for Google investors. Now, Google is investing the seven billion, that is with a B this year in data centers and office space expansions. Got a little map here. About a billion of it is coming here in California, but a lot of it is actually spread out across the country. So I actually kind of like to see that. Now, several states join Texas. In Google antitrust suit, we got Alaska, Florida, Montana, Nevada, and Puerto Rico are joining the multi-state suit. And this is a quote, our coalition, This is these are the states saying that we look forward to holding Google accountable for its illegal content in reforming Google's practices in the future. And we are confident Google will be forced to pay for its misconduct through significant financial penalties. That's what it's all about, okay? They started it saying that they want to hold them accountable. No, they're just going after their money. If Google was broke, they would not be going after them. So it's all about that money. My guess is Google will have to force to pay some kind of settlement here. These things don't tend to go away. When you're fighting the government, it is an unfair fight. And these corporations are just going to have to deal with it. And Google has the money to likely do that. Now, here's another one. Google will face a $5 billion, that is with a B, lawsuit over internet t tracking judge rules. So what happened is, is it, believe, it, it, it appears that Google was tracking users even when they were in the incognito mode on their browser. And the court concludes that Google did not notify users that Google engages in alleged data collection while users are in private browsing mode. And this is a $5 billion lawsuit. Google tried to get it dismissed, but it did not work. I tell you what, the Google lawyers are going to be making a bunch of money over the next few years. If anybody is an attorney, I would be trying to go apply at Google, Facebook, and Apple because you are going to have lots of work over the next couple of years. Now, moving on to Microsoft. Also, basically flat. Start of the week, 233. Ended the week, 231. Again, when we get over the stock chart, we'll see if it's held its critical support level. Not a lot of news coming out of Microsoft, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, Tesla, start of the week, 688. Showed some strength, but then sold off a little bit. We're at 648. Technically, we'll talk about Tesla. It's in a similar boat as some of these other stocks. We'll talk about what that means heading into next week. Now, Elon Musk is now the techno king of Tesla. That is right. Elon Musk and Zach Kirkhorn have changed their titles to techno king of Tesla and master of coin, respectively, over at Tesla. Obviously, this is kind of a joke, but it's I, it's not really a joke. Uh, I, I just think it's kind of funny that uh, they don't take themselves that. They take themselves seriously, but not that seriously over at Tesla. And I think actually investors actually appreciate that. Now, U.S. regulators are looking at nearly two dozen. That's 24 Tesla. Tesla crashes. Most of them involve the Tesla autopilot feature. Tell you what, if my boy Tiger Woods had a Tesla a few weeks ago and he had it on autopilot, you think he would have gotten in a car accident? Obviously, we're thinking about Tiger and we hope he gets better. Uh, I tell you what, if I was involved in a crash like that, I probably wish I would have had autopilot on. So uh, whether or not it is perfect, it's, it, it's certainly like any computer system. It's not perfect at all. But is it better than humans driving? I would say the evidence is overwhelmingly yes. So moving on to the stock charts. Talk about face Facebook's in a unique situation. Out of all these stocks, Facebook absolutely blew up. We talked about this stock last week. It hit this short-term kind of uh, support area here, right at 254, and boom, it it rocketed upwards. So this can kind of give you an idea. A lot of these stocks can just kind of sideways consolidate, come down here into a buy range, and then just rocket up. And so that's why I do like to nibble as these things pull back because we saw what happens with Facebook. Now, it's way up here now, all the way up 290. I mean, we went from 250 to 290 in like the matter of days on this one. Now, what happens when Facebook gets over 290? We've seen it happen here, and it got rejected. Happened here, got rejected. Happened right here, got rejected. So, But we've got a pretty solid green 
moving candle. So this is what I'm looking for on Facebook next week. Can we hold this 290 level? Can we start breaking up 294, 295, 296, 300? Obviously, you start doing that. And then, uh, you know, if you are somebody that likes to sell out of your positions as we get up into this range with Facebook, you could potentially think about doing that. If you see a rejection here at 290, well, it just keeps us in this big, gigantic sideways consolidation move from about 250 up to about 290 that we've seen with Facebook going back to about, you know, September and October of last year. Now, moving on to Apple. Speaking of sideways consolidation, that's basically what we did this week, end of the week, right sitting right here, right on our support line. We've had 120 marked out for a long time because it acted as resistance here. It acted as support here. It's acted as support really for the last, uh, you know, for a while here, last couple of weeks here. 120 has been where Apple has just naturally wanted to sit. Now, it peaked down here to 116, and that certainly was a shorter term buying opportunity. Now, we created a low here. And now we've got kind of a higher low here, especially if we see green on the screen with Apple next week could create a, again, another little uptrend. We kind of saw a similar price action here where we came down here, bottomed out, went up, came back down, created a higher low. And then we went from like 113 to 140 on this stock over the next, uh, call it about two months. So could a similar formation happen here? Yeah, that's possible. We'll see what happens. I'll let the chart kind of decide that. We're still in a downward trend on this one though. I do want to make that clear that this downtrend is basically still intact and until you kind of break above this and are able to stay above it and create a solid momentum well that is still intact and that's actually what I would look for so any deeper pullback in Apple 116 110 all the way down here to 105 those are all intermediate buying opportunities as long as you you know see the 10-year yield not spiking above two I think it could create buying opportunities now Amazon, almost identical chart to Apple, basically not necessarily sitting right on a support level. We could adjust these, these lines out a little bit. I try not to move them around too much so you can, I can show you that they, you know, for the most part, they do hold true. Now, 3,100 is proving to be a fairly strong resistance level. We see here, we did poke through 3,100 on Amazon. Amazon, but it kind of approached this 50 day moving average and got rejected and it is down here. Now, same thing we're seeing with Amazon. This thing is still in what I would call like a downtrend right here. Okay. This thing is still in a downtrend. It has not broken above it. And, you know, whether or not when it reverses, that is your key to maybe potentially go long this one. If you want to play this super safe, like Apple super safe, Amazon super safe, you want to see a break above this trend on a solid candle and continue that probably two consecutive days. Because if you can break above this and, and create a positive trend, look, 3,200 is back in play, 3,400 all the way back up here to 3,500 easily in play if this thing i mean we saw it with facebook you get a little bit of momentum behind these stocks and they can rock it to the upside in the intermediate term if this downtrend continues you've got 3000 and 2900 marked out here with amazon a pullback into those areas could be potential buying opportunities exact same situation we're seeing here with Netflix. We created a low here, created technically a higher low here, but on the longer term, we are still in what I would say is something like that. Still in a downtrend here. And so any, you know, we've seen, we've broken above it here. We've broken above it here. I just put this line in. It might not be perfect. Doesn't have to be. But every time we've kind of peaked above here, this thing has gotten rejected. And so really what I'm looking for with Netflix, it's the one stock out of all of these that I don't own. I'm looking for a pretty deep pullback, probably down here to 470. 470 was the bottom of our range. And 470 is the bottom. Okay, as we approach 480, 475, I'd certainly be, you know, getting ready and probably putting in small orders on this one, okay? But a break above this, you know, longer term or kind of intermediate term downtrend that we're in, we break above that on a couple candles and look, 540, 
565, even the all time highs up above $600 could be back in play with Netflix. It'd be interesting to see what happens next week. See if these can bust above it. Now, Google, not a lot going on here. Honestly, we have held the bottom end of this range again. I mean, we've kind of peeked through it here, but the bottom end of our range were marked out at 215. It is sitting right there. Now, if you believe that Google will bounce here at two, call it 220, 215. It can go back up to 2100 or 2100 and some change. So if you want to short term trade this one, you can. It's not my cup of tea, but it is set up for that. Just not a lot, honestly, going on with Google. Now, moving on to Microsoft, exact same thing that we're seeing here with Microsoft. Now, it is not necessarily in a and it's in a slightly downward trend, but it's not one that has any predictability. It is basically, in, in my opinion, just kind of trading sideways this level right at 230 is held okay we have broken through it we've gotten down here about 225 but it has held for the last several weeks now and so if you believe that microsoft will hold here at 230 and potentially bounce back up to 240 if it can have a facebook type event kind of have momentum yeah we could get back to 240 we could go back to 245 250 we could be off to the races with microsoft we'll see what happens any dip below 230 creates buying opportunities anywhere along here, especially as we approach this blue line, which is the 50-day moving average sitting right at 215. That would be an area where I certainly would be excited about getting into Microsoft. Now, finally, Tesla. Again, similar thing here, although it did break above, I would say it really did kind of break above the trend. It was in this downward trend, okay? And then we saw it, it, it broke above here and, and it's kind of hesitating, but it, it's, it is kind of, and it's kind of want. It looks like it wants to roll over again. Looks like this is just kind of a fake out move, and it's losing momentum here. But it is holding this two uh, six fifty range, six twenty to six fifty is holding on this stock. I think for me, again personally, I'm waiting for a pretty deep pullback. I think five forty would be interesting, closer to, to this uh, fifty day moving average, which is sitting right currently at about five hundred dollars. If for some reason we get negative sentiment into the market next week it could be create buying opportunities for these ones so i would have your eye on all these stocks outside of maybe facebook which really just if you want to play the momentum trade facebook is probably the one that could continue this uptrend or it could again like we talked about get rejected now in terms of earnings we're still a ways away still uh, about a month away or more on these stocks facebook is reporting april 28th you also have microsoft and tesla reporting on the 20th as well. Netflix is the first report on 420 and Google is going to report a week later on 427. Now, Apple reports on the 29th along with Amazon. So we're still about 40 days away from seeing these companies report. So there could be some action in the stock before them, but maybe not. They might just consolidate until that time comes. And again, a lot of this, you know, really a lot of this predicates, sorry, I haven't joined TradingView, so they've got something on here for me, but a lot of it is predicated here on this 10-year yield. I would keep an eye on that. One and three quarters percent, like we talked about, is an area of resistance for it. And if it, but if it breaks above that on some momentum next week, look, we're probably going to see a further pullback in these stocks. So hopefully you guys had a great week. We'll be back again next week. Thank you, everybody. Consider subscribing and liking this video if you haven't already. Good luck with your investments.